So in this video, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about my favorite pencil sharpener, and that's this, the Carl Angel 5 pencil sharpener. I know the channel's mostly focused on pens, but every once in a while, I do use pencils, and this is the pencil sharpener I like to use with them. The Carl Angel is a pretty standard sharpener. Like if you're shopping around, you will see this one at any fine stationary retailer, and uh, it's pretty affordable. MSRP is about $28, $29, but you can buy it for like uh, maybe $17, $20, right around there. And it's available not only at specialty retailers, but also Amazon and some other places like that. So it's called the Carl, and that's the company. The Angel 5 is the model. Carl makes other products. This is just my favorite. I believe it's their most popular product, definitely their most acclaimed. Uh, the company's been around since 1960, which is great to see. I believe it's an American brand, but the sharpener is made or manufactured in China. Uh, so it's a steel body, which is nice to see. It has a spring-loaded front uh, front plate that kind of forces the pencil in, which is important. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. It's called an auto-feed. And then, uh, so it's a zinc die-cast internals, which are good for long life. It's also replaceable, and there is a desk clamp but you can only use it on a desk that's, I think, up to like uh, maybe an inch and a quarter thick, so it's not going to be universally useful. Uh, I don't think there's too much else to it. Uh, here's that desk clamp. I haven't used it yet just because my desk is a little bit too thick. It's very simple, just this wing nut and then this plastic clamp. This is one of the few plastic parts on here. It's mostly metal hardware. So here is the pencil sharpener. It's a very simple design. You turn this to sharpen the pencil. This piece pulls out. It locks. You open the jaws to feed the pencil in here. You can see those jaws right there. And then uh, you can start turning it. And when you turn it, this little piece gets pushed up and this springs in. It falls down when you pull it out and it locks. So you could push it like this, but you don't have to because when you turn it and hit the top point or near the top point, it gets triggered. So that's pretty cool. All metal hardware, you can see the little uh, kind of, I guess they're not rivets, it's little like uh, uh, like a little pop weld or something like that, or maybe just like clamps together to hold the steel together. Here are the two little places where the uh, those arms go in and out. And then metal arm, plastic, spinny deal, plastic container, and not too much else to it. It's Carl Manufacturing USA, Inc. That's the company. I thought it was made in the U.S., but it's actually made in China. And that is clear as per the packaging. So uh, let's just see how it operates, and then we will get into sort of some of the insides. I have right here a kind of standard Dixon Ticonderoga. I will open this up, lock it, push it, put it in place, let go. And now uh, this works clamped or you can hold it in place. Uh, so that pencil is already pretty sharp. So let's see how it goes. So that is a little bit of too fine an, fine an angle for some people, but uh, for me, that's a really nice tip. This is not adjustable, so some eraser, uh, some sharpeners uh, will adjust the angle here, basically from the tip to uh, where it goes to the pencil itself, the unsharpened pencil or the paint. And uh, if you want a wider tip, uh, you could have an adjustable pencil sharpener. This is not adjustable. And it's a nice angle for general use. Basically, if the angle is too acute, then it will be too fine a line. And the fineness of the line is not the problem. It's really that the tip will be prone to breaking. Plus, it'll uh, you'll see more variability as the uh, tip goes from being super sharp to uh, more dull and flatter. If you start off with a wider tip, it's going to last longer at a consistent width and obviously be stronger because it's wider and be less prone to breakage. 
Now let's start with a not so sharp pencil. Uh, here's a just, I don't know, cheapo Staples pencil, pencil I had lying around. And let's try out the operation now. So you can't push this in here. The teeth will not allow it. That's one of the, it's not a major problem. It would just be nice if this was sort of a one-way design where it could push it in, but then grab on. You do have to use these arms. So that was about 13 turns. It looked a little awkward just because I was trying to count the turns and I have a camera in front of me. It's actually very easy to turn this. And we'll see uh, if we can get it to focus. Uh, that's a really nice point on a cheap pencil. Uh, this stuff, that's not tears in the wood. That's just a little bits of wood that's stuck to the pencil. Uh, we said it's a pretty fine, it, it, it's a nice cut. I don't know if fine is the right word, but it's a nice cut because the sharpener, the insides are relatively sharp. So it, it spins easily and it doesn't cut up the tip of your pencil that much. So I will say that one of the problems with a design like this is that the teeth here that grip on the pencil can damage the pencil. Not can, they will damage the pencil. So sometimes you'll buy uh, a $5 Cron d'Ache, really nice pencil. You'll be excited, you'll get it going. You'll sharpen it with your cool new sharpener. And what happens is it bites into the wood. And I'll exaggerate it right now just to prove my point, but you'll see what happens. And that could be uh, worse or better depending on the hardness of the wood or the pencil. Not the hardness of the lead, right, which that's on the inside, but the hardness of the wood. And basically it's this tooth action is spring-loaded and it's biting down on the pencil. So, and I'll pull this back, you could hear it a little bit. Crunching on the pencil. Sharpen it, whatever. And now, those little teeth marks, that's uh, it's two right there, two right there, and two right there, because it's a three blade design. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six little teeth. I mean, there's nine teeth, but only six that are in contact with the pencil. Those are biting into the pencil, and they're gonna create those little tooth marks. They won't generally be this bad, right? Because I forced it, but we could see how they would look like normally. We'll go a little bit up from the Dixon D. I didn't apply any pressure. Uh, pencil's already sharp, so we're not gonna do too much there. And uh, so like, sorry. Those are the teeth mark right there. So right there is the exaggerated teeth mark, and right there is the uh, standard bite mark. One, two, three, four, and then I guess that's five. It'd be a little bit better to see on a, a pencil in better condition, but uh, working with what we got here. Try it again, just let's try it with a fresh pencil. So it's sliding a little bit, that's prone to happening, but eventually it does grab hold. Teeth mark are here. And you could see where it slid on the pencil. It slid along that line and then it grabbed it right here, slide and grab, slide, and I don't think that's it. I think that's a existing wear mark. And then uh, slide and grab. So this is, a, like I said, this is just a cheap, uh, you know, kind of Staples brand pencil. It's not maybe the example, a perfect example of how this is gonna go against a nicer pencil, but you could see the point. Now, we will see what cleaning looks like. It's very simple. You push this tray out. Here is uh, shavings. They're really nice, they're really fine. And I don't think that's too important, except 
as a indicator that it's a really sharp blade and each revolution it's not taking off much. So you're getting this really nice fine shaving which is not dam damaging the pencil. It's these little very pleasant twisty curls. So that's really nice to see. To open the, this up, either to repair it or replace the blade, you're gonna turn this piece right here and pull out the chuck and the blades. This is all die cast zinc, so that means it's made well and it should stay sharp for a reasonable amount of time. It's this single blade here and this zinc hardware here. Uh, it's a very simple mechanism. So basically just you turn this and this blade part spins on these gears. It's a direct drive, so like this, this piece is being driven by this and the whole thing is spinning on this arm. There's no uh, extra gears in here. It's a one-to-one, -one, which it's a, again, it's a direct fit. So there's really not too much to break, which is nice to see. There's not like some sort of uh, gear set in there that creating some sort of clever ratios or anything like that. It's just a single uh, turning piece. To fix, it up, to fix it, to put it back together, you just put it straight in. You line up this little piece right here, push it in. Uh, and lock it down, and that's it, and we're good to go. This piece fits in nicely, and it can't push through. It is uh, something in there holds it back. I think there's a little, yeah, this little like ledge right here holds this, so you can't push it through. You can push this way. Uh, nothing's holding it in place, which is not a big deal, so it doesn't rattle loose, but uh, one of the issues is that nothing stops it from pulling out. So technically you could like, I don't know, you might leave it right here and then drop it. It could fall out on its own, but once it's here, it sort of clicks into shape right here. It clicks into place right there and it fits in nicely. So it doesn't rattle loose, which is definitely would be a major problem. So it's in quite well, you push it from the back and now it will like move around pretty freely. And there should be another point which at here where is hesitant, like it's hesitant to come out. You need to turn it or push it up and, and do something like that, but it doesn't have that. So not a huge deal, but that'd be nice to see. Uh, so yeah, that is the Carl Angle 5 pencil sharpener. It's my pick as my favorite pencil sharpener and my go-to and the one I recommend. It's made really well. It's fun to use and you could have it for under 20 bucks and you'll have, uh, I don't know about a lifetime, but many, many months of sharpening pencils. Thanks for watching.